Welcome to, I guess, a special edition of the Tommy and Grace podcast, episode three. Johnny T-shirt, johnnytshirt.com, and congruityhr.com, front slash Tar Heels, for your free assessment and small business needs. Grace Nugent, I'm Tommy Ashley, and Grace, this is uh, the trifecta of these podcasts. North Carolina advances to Omaha with a thrilling 2-1 to one win over West Virginia on Saturday night. I'll start with this question for you. Have you ever seen baseball as quality as it's been in Chapel Hill the last two weeks, at least college baseball? Because we see these scores around the country, and they look like they're playing football uh, with the scores out there. But Carolina plays a 2-1 game against West Virginia, wins it in the end once again. Dalton Pence, the man on the mound when it happens. Your overall thoughts on this weekend? It was just, it was such a gritty weekend. Both games. I mean, walk off on Friday, one run game yesterday. I'm I'm sitting on the concourse in my press seats and I, I can't sit still in general and I cannot sit still for the entirety of these games. I'm just, it's so adrenaline- filling and it's it's just such quality baseball you have pitching duels vance honeycutt putting on a basically draft combine clinic the entire team just you have madera stepping up when he needs to it's just everything you could want in a college baseball game everything you could want in a super regional i mean d1 and espn and twitter have all been like chapel thrill it really has been for the last two weekends it has just been such a thrilling time, and it is some of the best quality baseball. I had on suicide play yesterday in my apartment. At one point, there's five different college baseball games on, and maybe only the Florida State-UConn game could compare to just the level of grit and tenacity that West Virginia and UNC showed last night and the entire weekend in general. Yeah, it's always funny to me to see people say the deeper you get into a regional the pitching starts wearing out we start seeing bigger scores or whatever Carolina last week against LSU a ridiculous game to end that you know game seven and then last night folks expected West Virginia to run out of pitching and then Swatowski comes out and pitches well and they just continue to stymie North Carolina's hitters but Grace one thing that stands out and and you and I have talked to Scott Forbes And shout out to Matt Clements because he was on these for a lot too as well. He always talks about the team, the unity, and playing 27 outs. And it was highlighted perfectly the entire weekend. I mean, from the Vance's walk-off to Pence shutting guys down yesterday. I mean, this team has embodied what Scott Forbes has talked about all season. All career, really, but all season. It, yeah, it really both games came down to the the very last moment. Dalton just hustling to get over to first. And he said after the game, I'm not a runner. So I really had to hustle over there. And Forbes added in, Harbor's not a runner either. And then Vance's walk-off. They have really taken exactly that process-oriented approach from King, King Saban that Forbes has been preaching They talked about in their first team meeting that their goal wasn't just getting to Omaha, but to win it all. And the way they do that is through their process. And the two big words that he talked about were love and unity. And I feel like when you think college baseball, the first things that come to mind are not love and unity, but those are two words that these guys and coach has repeated throughout the season. And I think it really showed up. Madera talked about it last week when he didn't get his bunt down that just he was like the dugouts all like well they're gonna pick you up they're gonna pick you up and that happened to last night as well the team is just there for each other they're passing it down the line and it's paid off very stressfully but it is paid off yeah and and, and sitting in the stands um Y'all had the press row seats on the concourse, which I think is awesome. That is probably the only place I'd want to sit for press row because it's right there in the middle of everything. Um, But sitting in the stands, watching the parents' reaction, watching how they interact um, with other parents. One of them told us, and of course you know who I'm talking about, and I'm not going to share his name. He is very enthusiastic. He said the biggest thing for him and for his son on this team is the opportunity first – 
but then the love that they have for everybody. And they truly like each other, love each other, and all that stuff. It's a cliche in sports all the time. And in sports, especially baseball, you don't have to like your teammates. You just have to show up and play. These guys truly do. And, and, and to your point about Madera's bunt last week and Colby stepping up and then other guys stepping up, it's accurate. And I want to ask you about Dalton Pence because watching it in person, they are standing behind um, sections 112, 113. Dalton looked like he realized, uh-oh, i got to run. And then you go and you watch the replay on TV and the look on his face when he realized – he had to get the first immediately, to your point. Not a runner, but definitely a dog and a bulldog and a guy that's going to do everything he can to win. I thought he was good in the postgame press conference, sort of explaining all those emotions. What do you think? I, I think that Dalton talking to the media and Dalton pitching have both evolved so much over this season. Forbes talks about low heartbeat guys. That is probably your lowest heartbeat right there. You put him in. I was a little bit surprised when Forbes pulled Jacaro. I thought he, especially because, yes, he let something through, but I thought he could have gone a little bit longer. But who am I to argue with an Omaha-bound coach, Scott Forbes? And then you bring Dalton in. And I wouldn't even say, I mean, he fanned six batters in his two and two-thirds innings of scoreless relief. I wouldn't even say that was his best outing. But, again, it was just pure, pure competitor and on those last at bats, yeah, he walked a guy. He had the bases loaded. I was sitting here like Dalton. I want to get this story up. I want to go to post game. I want to go to cover Omaha. And you're making it really hard. Um, and from my side, on top of the first base dugout, it's hard to see the pitches come in to see if they're balls and strikes, which kind of adds to the. I have to go back and watch the ESPN. But he, I mean, he he battled. And in the post game, he said, I, I had to run. I saw Parks get the ball. Parks also told by himself, Forbes, not a runner. And then Dalton had to absolutely hustle. And I can't remember who was at, at the at bat for West Virginia, but I mean, he went head first. He was trying to do everything because if that, that would tie the game and that would, that probably would have been the end right there. So Dalton just put on, I think, one of his, maybe not stuff-wise his best performance, but one of his best performance in a spot where they needed him. They needed him to deliver. Yes, it had some ups and downs, but he got it through and, I mean, made the final out on a way that you might not expect your, like, bulldog pitcher with Spencer Strider legs to do, but it worked out for the Tar Heels. And now they're going to Omaha. He threw his glove after and he told us after, I think it was one of the LSU games that he threw his glove and then he had to go find it on the turf because he couldn't find it. And yesterday I'm watching from kind of inside like the dugout on the way to the press conference of everyone else is hugging and Dalton Pence with his hat and his tag on is going to pick up his discarded glove. Really a cool moment in Bosch Hummer Stadium. If you were there, you know it. If you weren't there... Um, watched it on TV, certainly. Uh, I've been to a lot of games in that stadium, been a lot of games this year, um, as everybody that's covered them every day since August. It is, uh, it, it is as, was as hyped in there and as, you know, they call it Bosch magic for a reason. It was crazy in the stands. Seeing the parents, like I mentioned earlier, seeing the parents living and dying every pitch, every play, um, you sort of realize what it means to all those folks. We're talking with Grace Nugent here on a special super recap. Heels to Omaha. Grace, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about West Virginia a little bit. Uh, Randy Mazie in the postgame press conference got emotional talking about his guys and his career. But he did say something that stood out to me. He said, nobody expected us to come in here and do what we were able to do. And granted, they lost. Um, and ultimately, that's all people ultimately care about. <clears throat> but his team put more stress on Carolina than I would wager just about anybody not named Scott Forbes and coaching staff thought they could do. What did you think about how they played and how they were able to to come out and do what they did? And they brought some fans. 
not near as many LSU fans as LSU fans, but I thought the West Virginia fans were as loud and as rowdy and uh, pulling their team on. But Maisie's guys, that was a lot tougher than most anybody expected. Oh, yeah. And I remember before Super started, NCAA baseball put out a power rankings of the teams in the Supers. And the last one was Evansville. And the one before that was West Virginia. And I was like, no, 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 no. You do not underestimate a three seed who came out of a regional that I think was kind of up for grabs from anyone. And they play, I mean, you say UNC played gritty. They play gritty baseball. If you could just put, I know JJ Weatherholt is the big name for West Virginia, but I think the person who just really demonstrated encapsulated the entire West Virginia team was Derek Clark. He pitched 144 pitches, 144 on Friday, which as Maisie said in that post-game press conference, that's like Nolan Ryan level, 100 strikes. I'm trying to remember the last time a UNC pitcher got to 100 pitches. And this guy pitched 100 strikes. And then Switalski came out and they, they fought for absolutely everything. They ran everything out. They made the outfield run. They made the infield make plays. They put a lot of pressure on the UNC pitchers. I mean, yesterday, uncharacteristically, Matei, Matty, not a good outing. Not a great outing from him. And Peterson looked more like February Peterson, which UNC will have to work on towards Omaha. But, I mean, when those two guys weren't on, they made him pay. And West Virginia, I mean, yesterday with that guy outstretched towards first base, Dalton almost stepping on his hand to get to the bag, I think that perfectly encapsulates how they were in it the whole time. They were either right behind or in yesterday's, not yesterday, Friday's case, a little bit ahead before Van Sunnycutt was Carolina legend status Van Sunnycutt. But a credit to the West Virginia team because, I mean, they showed out. And – the story of Kyle West is awesome. They had him benched for two of the games in the Tucson Regional, and then on Friday he comes out and he hits two bombs. And he's like, I think it's because I changed my ba- my bat to like a two-piece bat instead of a one-piece. And he comes out and he hits two bombs. So they, they had some heroes. They really fought for everything, especially that Maisie's retiring. I think that kind of added to that. They wanted to – represent for their coach, their school. Maisie said it in the first press conference. There's a ton of D1 colleges in North Carolina. There are two in West Virginia. That West Virginia flag flies all over the state, that blue and gold, and it's all for that school. So I think that they played with a ton of heart and it wasn't just for their team, their coach, not to say that UNC didn't play for other people. Of course they did. But they they really gave it to them, that's for sure. Yeah, it, it was fun to watch. And I love old school baseball, low scoring games. And while 8-6 is not really low scoring, it kind of is these days in college baseball and certainly 2-1 on Saturday night. And you mentioned West. You had Chumley that made plays. You had up and down their lineup, those guys did what they could. I didn't think Weatherholt did – much of anything, which was a surprise. And it makes the way West Virginia played as a team even stronger because Weatherholt's been their guy all year, and he wasn't able to to sort of recapture the magic. He's been hurt a little bit, but he's certainly been and worthy of his top 10, top 15 MLB ranking. One more question before I let you get out of here. We are talking about North Carolina's run to Omaha. It'll begin Friday against Virginia, of all people out there. Florida State's also in that side of the bracket, if I'm looking at it correctly. Um, And we'll see what Evansville and Tennessee do later today, if you're watching this on Sunday morning. Uh, Vance Honeycutt. I mean, people talk about how Vance strikes out too much. Probably does. People talk about how Vance watches too many pitches at times. He probably does. But one thing Vance Honeycutt does is hit Back-to-back pitches in two separate games for home runs. Don't think I've ever seen that. Walks it off Friday night, leads it off Saturday night, sets the tone for Carolina. 
uh, somebody in the press conference asked, if this is your last game in Boshheimer Stadium, and it's got to be, folks. Re realistically, it's got to be with what he's able to do on the next level. But Vance stepped up as much as any Tar Heel uh, superstar, I guess if you want to call him, has done. He did not shy away from the moment. He made the play in the outfield to get the guy at first um, on a ridiculous throw. Just sort of speak to sort of his evolution this year, not only on the field, in press conferences, in the ability to lead and be vocal and all. He's done it all at Chapel Hill. Now it's time for him to do it in Omaha, Nebraska. I will say that I started the year, and of course Vance is a fantastic player, and I started the year and I was like, I need him to prove it to me that he can be a good player. He can work with the media. That's something that's going to happen as he gets older and he goes through the minor leagues and eventually maybe the majors, and he has exponentially moved up my power rankings, you could say. And he just, this was the perfect Vance Honeycutt weekend. He did everything you could ask for. I think he he talked about having conversations with Casey and Weirs and Colby in the dugout before some of their at-bats. And obviously he hit the walk on Friday, which was just 425 out of here, Bosch erupts. Just the perfect Vance Honeycutt moment. And I think I think yesterday encapsulates everything that he is kind of as a player. Yes, he hit that home run to start the game off. Back-to-back -back pitches. He showed how clutch he can be and just how he's there for his team. He was running around the third base, running down the third baseline towards home. And he goes like this, like to say our house. This is our Bosch magic, just to, you know, set the set the tone of the game. And then he put on for all the naysayers talking about the strikeouts or that his hit tool will never recover from his what else he has. He put on an absolute clinic yesterday. He showed everyone, this is who I am. I'm playing the game that I'm good at, and I'm just going to show you how good at it I am. Throwing out the runner at first, that was a perfect ball absolutely perfect ball he just dotted it in there he made a difficult catch look routine in the bottom of the eighth after skylar king absolutely tattooed a ball to the gap vance just turns on the jets grabs grabs the ball i don't really know how many other outfielders in the country can do that and we've been saying this for a while but people next year are really gonna i think we're gonna take for granted that there's there's no vance honeycutt in center same with there's no Anthony D'Onofrio in right, but there's no Vance Honeycutt in center. He pushed a bunt down to with two two outs to get himself on. Casey gets a single, and then Park scores Vance. I mean, I don't know how many guys are going to push a bunt down and leg it out with two down. I'm, he also struck out once, which if you're Vance, you got to at least have one strikeout in the game. Makes it a perfect Vance Honeycutt game. And... He just, they talked last night about, Forbes said that at the beginning of the season, Vance has never been one of the most vocal guys, very much lead by example. And Forbes told us that last night before the game, Vance looks at him and goes, hey, coach, are you nervous? And Forbes is like, do I look nervous? And Vance is like, just hop on. We got you. And Forbes said he said that at the beginning of the year too. And that's just kind of what he's done. He's steadily kind of steered the ship, obviously, some ups and downs with himself, his strikeouts, going through some tough stretches. But he came through when they really needed it, and I don't really think you can ask for anything more. Absolutely. Uh, what is it? Heavy, wear, heavy is the head that wears the crown. Vance Sunnycutt has been the face of this program um, player-wise for the last three years, and he certainly has done uh, – saved some of the highlights for the end here – in Boshheimer, Carolina to Omaha, Vance goes four for nine in the regional with a couple home runs, including the dramatic one to win Fridays and then the leadoff. I feel like before we go, we need to shout out a couple other people that we've kind of been tough on, both um, on message boards and stories or whatever, Matt Poston on Friday night. If you just said Matt Poston's going to do what he did against Long Island last weekend, 
we thought we may never see him again. Scott Forbes has faith beyond um, fans, that's for sure. And Poston comes out with three strong innings to get that game or to keep that game in line. And then you've got Ben Peterson on the other side of it, who's looked well, did not look great. I expect we'll see Ben Peterson with a with a bounce back this coming weekend when the College World Series starts. Just sort of highlight a couple more players maybe that we've missed and that folks overlook except when things go wrong because I think you got to give them props when things go right as well. I think Poston – and Poston has done this. He'll have a not great outing, which he did get He did get the win, the LIU win actually. But he'll have not a great outing, and then he'll come back and he'll really show you, hey, this is what I can do. And he did. It's not just like he closed. Like he pitched – I think the last three innings and he was hilarious in the post game afterwards. And someone asked him about his like mentality and he goes, you know, I knew it couldn't be worse than last Friday. So as long as I did a, like better than that, which hard to not do, I was going to be fine. And my guys got me and I didn't ask him. I wanted to, but I knew he couldn't tell me in front of, well, actually probably ever about what he was saying on the mound. Cause we've talked to him. He's a talker to himself. He was definitely getting himself through that inning. And I think that, yes, he's given up some big balls, which is what Forbes said too. But if you look at the stats overall, he's come in in some big moments and he's really delivered. And that's what he did. So apologies to Matt Poston if we rag on you a little bit too much. He, just like Vance, delivered when his team really needed it. And Peterson is very much like – I think like a pitch tinkerer, um, a, like a deep, deep thinking baseball aficionado. And I will definitely, I think I can see him kind of looking back through, I mean, he hit two guys that does not look like the control. So I wonder if there was something off in his prep, his routine, but I definitely believe he will be in that pitch lab with coach Gaines just working. Cause they're going to need him. They're going to need him. He needs to be one of those arms that they can pull out of the pen and get that 96 mile per heater heater by you. Cause you don't have a lot of other guys who have that velocity. And then some of the other guys that might be overlooked. I mean, he hasn't been overlooked the last two weeks and I said this, but I think Alex Madera is just one of the unsung heroes. We thought he was going to play short and he's been at second and he's turned a ton of double plays and he's gotten some really great balls and, he has a lot of quality at bats, and I just think he is a fantastic player that really, really completes that infield. Um, and on on that note, too, we get on Parks for his defense sometimes, but he made some pretty awesome stretches the past two weekends when you really needed it. I mean, you got to catch all those balls at first, especially from Gavin rocketing them in and Wilkerson. And so I think that I mean, we talk about the big name guys all the time, but I think that Madera, and we talk about Parks' bat, but I think he's come a long way on the defensive side. And I think that can't be overlooked either. Yeah, total team effort from North Carolina. Winning their regional last weekend, getting two out of three against LSU, and then sweeping West Virginia, uh, culminating in the two-to-one win on Saturday night. Carolina heads to Omaha. There'll be plenty of coverage on Inside Carolina. It's been the place to be to get your college baseball Carolina coverage on Inside Carolina. Thanks to Grace for that. Thanks to Evan Rogers, Adam Smith, Jim Hawkins with the ridiculous photos, Michelle Hillison knocking them out, and then the, the, the PTBs at Inside Carolina making it all happen. Shout out to all the fans that say nice things when we're around. Um, we do the coverage. You guys consume it. Um, and it makes us feel good as people that do this, that folks are listening. Shout out to the parents that have said plenty of nice things about the Inside Carolina coverage. It will continue for sure as Grace heads to Omaha later this week to join North Carolina, Virginia, Florida State so far. And if folks um, ever doubt the level of college baseball, look around. Look around and see how these games in Chapel Hill were played and then look around at some of the other games in college baseball. Plenty of things to be decided today before the World Series field is complete. Grace, any final thoughts before we get out of here? Um, can't wait to, to see the coverage that's coming down from IC this week. Can't wait to see your work 
Can't wait to see you guys in Omaha shortly. But any final thoughts here today? I, I'm so excited to go to Omaha. It's the pinnacle of college baseball. And if you know anything about me and the people watching is I absolutely love baseball. So this is their World Series and also my World Series. But I think another shout out has to be given to Coach Scott Forbes. He has taken a squad that lost their ace and then lost a Friday night starter. He, we talked about the transfer portal, the transfer portal, NIL. Well, he brought in some, I think, very, Alex Madera, very overlooked coming from a D3. Anthony D'Onofrio, his story is just insane. Even like Aiden Hout coming from a Juco, he brought in some guys to come in and fill the gaps and round out this team. And I don't want to say team of destiny, but it seems like they really love each other. They love being together. And Forbes has worked really hard to foster that environment. And that has turned into success on the field. And he's dealt with a lot of things across this season. So he'll always shout out his coaching staff and we don't get to talk to them, but Coach Howell, Coach Riley, Coach Weirs, Coach Gaines, they're working day in and day out for the boys to win as well. And that entire coaching staff, I think, deserves some kudos for the fantastic job that they've done. Getting UNC back to Omaha for the 12th time in program history and the first time since 2018. They say teams mirror the coach's personality. You've seen that on display, full display the last two weeks. Expect to see it again in Omaha. That's Grace Nugent. I'm Tommy Ashley. Shout out to Johnny T-Shirt, johnnytshirt.com, and Congruity for their great sponsorships. Shout out to b and Heating and Air in the Apex, Pittsburgh, Chapel Hill area for that. I told you guys I'd give you a nod. And shout out to everybody that pays attention. We'll be back soon enough with more coverage.